Oh, morning everyone. Gosh, that's lots of people jumping in to watch me, to watch me live. We'd be probably completely sick of me from yesterday. Um, I just thought I'd do a little bit more this morning um, on my lovely uh, on my lovely Vinny. Um, just because I had such a nice time last night on the uh, on the live stream. So I hope you can. Um, oh, thank you, Liam. I hope you can all hear me because I always have issues with my blooming microphone. So I'm just going to carry on um, this morning a little bit before I start on my next my next piece. Um, just getting all my iPad and everything set up. Hi, Sarah. Um, so, yeah, so I just thought I'd just carry on. Um, I had loads of people join me last night, which was so nice. Well, last night, yesterday afternoon. Um, it was really, really nice. I do like drawing with people and I do, as you know, I do like chatting. So... Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd just carry on a little bit with the fur and then people can um, sort of watch a little bit more if they want. Oh, what's going on there? I don't know whether my... I don't know whether my live streaming is not working very well. My Wi-Fi is a bit... In fact, I'm going to take my Wi-Fi off my phone so I can see some of your messages. My Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy, I think. There we go. Any advice for a beginner doing a black kitten? Um, I find cats really, really hard, actually. Um, and I think it's because I don't really know cats very well. Well, I do know cats well, but I don't, I don't, I don't know their physiology as much as I do horses and dogs. Um, what I would say for black fur is, you know, lots of lots of different colours to get that really nice, um, that really nice blackness. I think is a is a good idea. Um, so using, look at your photo, and if it looks sort of coolish so if it looks bluey then you sort of blues underneath your blacks if it looks a little bit sort of ready or more warm um colored then use um then use reds under your blacks um, and just go slow um and with the fur depending on the sort of fur of the of the cat um i'm gonna swap and bring in a little bit of this this is a cold grey that I'm going to use in here um, you know you, you've got to try and get it sort of like cats have got really 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 dense fur or they tend to have really dense fur um, you know so it's about sort of I would say little tiny short strokes to get that nice denseness of the fur in there um, you know but uh, I'd say just jump in just jump in and do it it'll be it'll be wonderful um, Hi everybody, good morning. I hope you're all okay this morning. I've been up since six, <laughs> as be usual, woken up by the dogs. Um, Slipper's really good. She will sleep for, for ages. But um, Vinny seems to kind of um, have his alarm clock firmly at six o'clock and uh, wants to go outside, the little, the little rascal. So we've all had breakfast. We've been for a nice walk. And uh, I just thought I'd do a little bit more live streaming. Um, just so you can kind of see, you know, and if you want to carry on drawing them and everything. And then all of the videos are kind of, they'll either be on YouTube or um, or uh, or Facebook. So, just cooking dinner. Oh, hi Shelley. Um, cooking dinner. <laughs> I love that we're all over the place, all over the world and uh, all different time zones and everything. So I need some blue in here. Definitely need some blue. I need to find that silver, silver grey that is lurking around somewhere, and I don't know where. Um, honestly, my pencils are all over the place. What's that? That's not a silver grey. Uh, 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 uh. I, I used that light cobalt blue and that one, and that one. I need to have a good look and find some better greys. What's that? No, what's that? No. Oh, honestly, I need to have a good a good tidy up in my studio, that's for sure. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of this light cobalt blue into this grey area here just to get a bit of that. So what I'm trying to do is just get colour in really and then I can start to put detail in over the top. 
which is a really good way of using the drafting film, just kind of, you know, whacking your colour in and then um, going in over the top with an eraser or a slice or something and um, getting all of that detail in. Oh, thanks, Mary Lou. That's nice. A look of wonder in those eyes. Yeah, a look. Well, I don't know whether it's a look of wonder or a look of a look of complete mischief. <laughs> <laughs> he's um yeah he's a f he's a funny funny boy little tinker he is he's uh we met um well we 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 kind of kept our distance but we met the little i think he's a shih tzu in the in the village little eric um the shih tzu and um i think Vinny would quite like to play um with eric <laughs> so we have to be a little bit careful um we have to be a, a touch careful about um, <laughs> how close he gets. So, gosh, this hair around here. You've got very fluffy hair, Vincent. You really have got fluffy hair. Like a little fluff ball. How many hours in total would you typically spend on a portrait like this? Um, well, um, this one probably is is a little bit speedier, actually. And you could get away with, with doing this one a bit speedier because because it's, it's really fluffy. So you can really sort of go to town, you know, getting all of that colour in and then just quickly going in and getting, you know, putting the, the detail and everything in. So this this type of drawing may may take me maybe about, I don't know, eight, eight to ten hours, something like that, maybe a little bit longer. Um, Especially if it's one that I'm not, um, sometimes I really, really go to town on detail and really spend ages and ages. And then some pieces like the little rabbit that I did, um, some, and the, I've got another, another little one, the Bernard dog one, which took me five hours. Um, you know, so something like this actually where it's, there's a lot of texture, um, it can take a lot less time because you, you 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 know you don't have to be really really careful about where you're putting all of the detail and of course with the drafting film what's lovely about that is i don't have to add you know sort of five ten layers um i can get away oh Vinny. oh <laughs> um i can get away with just one or two layers you know if i get the color right um you know so that's um that's quite good really you know so this one can take uh, you know quite a lot less time um you know just sort of uh, being a little bit looser i guess uh you know with the um with my pencil strokes but still getting in all of the it's the tonal details really it's the tonal qualities that are the most important so still getting all of those in um you know but uh, but at the moment it's just about getting all of that all of the um just getting colour in on the paper, really, um, you know, which is quite speedy. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be doing the Jason Morgan one this afternoon because I can't use pastels. Um, I wouldn't be able to speak afterwards using pastels. They, um, that's the reason that I don't use them. I would, I would love to use them, but um, having um, tried them in the past, they, they just go straight to my chest and um, I lose my voice. So I, which probably is a really good thing for some people, um, but I can't, um, I can't risk losing my voice because I've got so many um, recordings that I'm doing at the moment, um, you know, so uh, it, it's really weird with pencil dust and even, it even happens a little bit. I've got to be quite careful with pe pencil on, on pastel mat. Um, I can really, really, my voice just goes all croaky. It's, um, it's, it's very odd. So I don't use pastel at all. But I, um, I have got it on, I've got it set to remind me, I think it's half past five, I've got it set to remind me, I've put a link on my page as well, so if anybody watching wants to um, join the amazing Jason at half past five, it's his first live, I can't believe it's his first live drawing as well, um, so he's got, he, he's got all of the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and um and um and he's and he's often live at half five so i can't wait um so i'm gonna uh, definitely gonna be joining that one so he is he is one of my my favorite artists i have to say um and i have bought I, um i think it was it was probably 2016 i think i bought one of his oil painting or it could have been 2017 i bought one of his oil painting tutorials he's got some really good tutorials that you can just download from his website um 
and they were they're really really good and easy to follow i mean i i didn't do a very good job at all but they're really good and easy to follow um so i definitely recommend having a look at his um you know some of the tutorials that you can download um you know and he's and he's really uh, he's really helpful with all of his advice advice and everything as well so um I got everything else. What's the most difficult part to draw? Just started with the hair over Vinny's right eye, the little wispy ones, they look scary. <laughs> um no, they're not scary at all. Um I, I think with wispy hairs, um the best thing to do is just to sort of um use quite loose um pencil strokes to begin with. So you get because a dog like this, what you're wanting is you're wanting to get um you're wanting to get a feel for the, the hair and it's quite nice and, and loose and free and there's a lot of movement in there. So if you're quite sort of careful with your strokes, you'll end up with a Vinny looking um, you know, beautifully groomed, but part of his character is the messiness, is the real sort of scruffiness of him. Um, you know, so um, being a little bit looser with those sort of bits of bits of you know hair flying all over the place is actually going to add to the character. So uh, you know, don't be scared. Just um, just just put some pencil marks in. Um, you know, it'll be um, it'll be fabulous. Most difficult part to draw. Um, so what is the most difficult part of something to draw for me is, um, what do I find the most difficult? On a dog, I find this sort of area quite tricky. The, the, because what you're wanting is, Vinny has got a really long nose um, and you're wanting to show that there is length between here and here. And that for me is quite difficult to get all of those, you know, the hair going in the right direction, all of that type of stuff. So, um, you know, it's it's you've got to really, really concentrate and um, and get get the perspective and everything, everything right. And a lot of it is about getting your hair um, length and direction and all of that type of stuff, um, you know, correct. Um, and, and on a short haired dog, it's. I find it much harder, you know, especially for some something like a Labrador. If the Labrador is looking straight at you, it's it's quite difficult to get all of that hair going in the right places. Um, you know, so I, 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 I find that more of a challenge. Um, and also if you're drawing a dog like a, I don't know, um, like a bulldog or a staffy or something like that they tend to be very wide across this area here and the the skin is quite taut and getting getting the cheekbone so that it looks like it's sucked in rather than puffed out that's quite tricky as well um what else have we got um love the rabbit you did is that on patreon only it is val uh, yes it is it's um it's a patreon one it's on the i think it's on the first tier the five dollar tier there's some Oh my goodness, honestly, I see all of the people who um, who are doing the tutorials and then they share their pictures and they're, they're just amazing. They're absolutely incredible. Um, you know, there's some really, really fantastic skills out there. Brilliant, brilliant people. Oh, hi, Rose. Good. <laughs> I like to surprise people. Oh, hi, Katie. Oh, that's nice that you're that you're uh, that you're joining me. Um, please could you repeat the name of the artist you like oh it's I like loads of artists <laughs> one of them's on here um, Katie Day she's a, she's an artist that I absolutely love and I've got a few of her pieces actually um, and I've and I've just commissioned her to do another one um, so if you want to go and look at some incredible beautiful beautiful art go and have a look at Katie Day's stuff it's fantastic um, but the chap I was work, talking about before was Jason Morgan um, so uh, you know he is um, and he's got the most lovely voice as well so I'm going to sit down with my with my biscuits and my pot of tea <laughs> And listen to his lovely voice this afternoon i can't wait i'm so excited i never get to watch any I, you know i've got loads and loads of youtube um videos um lined up for me to watch and i get i get little uh, reminders um you know oh so and so's got a video so and so's got a video and they're all lined up to watch and i never get to watch them and the only time i end up watching youtube is if i can't do something so um, I was trying to set my camera up and I'm getting an AC adapter to put into my camera so that I, um, the battery lasts longer. 
and I have no idea where my where to put this AC adapter thing on my camera. So I, I had to watch a YouTube video for that. And then when my washing machine broke down um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I ended up having to watch <laughs> watch a YouTube video on how to clean the the pump out. The pump got blocked. So, and those are the only times that I end up watching um, YouTube. And I've got all of these fantastic videos of other artists to watch, and I never get to watch them. Um, it's such a shame. So um, I've set my timer for Jason's this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll be watching Jason too. Oh, do you know, I, 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 I love pastel work. I think it looks absolutely incredible. And there's a couple of pastel artists that I follow on Instagram. And it's just like... Oh, how do you get them? You know, the most amazing work. And and I keep on saying to myself, like, you know, maybe I should try pastels again. Maybe I should give it a go. But I just can't, um, I can't breathe. <laughs> so I just don't think it's a very good idea. Um, and I do love my pencils. I think I'd feel a little bit, um, you know, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite addicted to my colour pencils, I have to say. So, have you ever tried the Caran d'Ache blender? Oh, the um, yes, I've got this one here. Look, Telly, this one. This is the colourless blender. So I do use it occasionally on my um, pastel mat work. Um, I think this is the best blender, the colourless one. It's really, really good. Um, so, da, 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 da. oh, you're scared to use them? Don't be scared. Just use them. Just get in there um that you can sharpen them up so you just put them in your pencil sharpener and, and sharpen them up and I, I use them on well they'll work on smooth paper and they'll also work really really well on like pastel mat and stuff like that i wouldn't use them on the drafting film though because you don't really need to um sorry if you've already covered this but can you go over the process of layering the color down and getting the hair to look real yes of course so um this bit i'm doing here in fact i'm just going to shunt it over a little bit um that i'm doing here i'm just starting to do the ear so i'm just putting in a layer of color so you start with i tend to start with the lightest color that i can see um this ear is quite dark and it's got some um it's got some um little um hairs and stuff's kind of coming out but um i tend to just sort of put put the first color in very lightly i'll use really light pressure um and then I'll put, I just layer the other colours over the top. And to get the realistic looking fur, it's all about um, just slowly building up the layers. And I, I, I like to think of it as almost working inside out. So you work from the, um, you know, it's almost like working from the skin out, um, you know. So you kind of look for the lightest colour. I mean, Vinnie here is all sort of grey, so I'm just using a lot of greys. Um, and once I kind of block all of this in, I can start to work on the hair underneath. But on the drafting film, I tend to put block in the colour first and then I'll start to take out the little bits of hair. So you'll be able to see that in a minute when I've when I've kind of worked on this ear a little bit more and blocked in the colour, you'll be able to see how I bring in all of the detail. But on normal paper, um, so smooth paper, um, pastel mat, that type of stuff, um, you just layer up your colours gradually. And when we talk about layering, it's not just the same colour over and over and over again. Um, it's more about sort of using one colour, then another colour, then back to the original colour, then another colour. And it's um, it, colour is very personal. So, you know, the colours that I see, you might not see exactly the same ones. Um, you know, where I see maybe a bit of pinkiness, you might see, um, you know, maybe a little bit more yellow or something like that. And it's important to um, to to kind of pick colours that you see. Um you know, because we are, it is a very personal thing. Um, but uh, it's just about light pressure, um, you know, and then just building the colours up, colours up gradually. Um, with the drafting film, is a little bit different because the blending doesn't really work the same as, as normal paper. So you've got to kind of build that in a little bit. Um, but, um, you know, if you can put sort of, you know, a few colours in, then um, you're going to get a lot more depth. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of how I uh, I, I build my layers. Um, you know, just really looking at the colour. 
and I've got I've got some more videos actually if you look at some of the videos that I've I've been live streaming when I did the horse I've got some where I've um, I've been layering right from the beginning and you can see all of the colors that I've used on there a little bit more interesting than Vinnie who's just sort of a gray color um, but that one I've used sort of like um, oranges and purples and pinks and blues um, you know and you can see how I've sort of layered up on that um, you know it works quite nicely um, still using the dark sepia pencil yeah still using the dark sepia <laughs> I'm just going to use it forever. <laughs> it's daunting when you're a beginner with pencils. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I guess anything, anything. When you start using anything new, it's daunting. And I guess it's because you know it's you're 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 you'll be sort of a bit scared of um, of going wrong. Um, you know, you'll be a bit scared of doing the wrong thing. But you know, actually, it doesn't doesn't matter if you go wrong. That's brilliant because you're learning. You know, so going wrong is going to give you some really good learning opportunities and actually going wrong can end up with some really quite nice, you know, I think it was Bob Ross that said about, you know, happy accidents and stuff like that. You know, it can be really, really quite nice um, going wrong because you start to, um, you know, you start to sort of uh, find techniques that you hadn't known existed. <laughs> So uh, I'm just using a bit of black now. Now I've not used the, the this film I'm using at the minute. I haven't used before, so it's a little bit different to um, my usual drafting film. This is the Polydraw 0.75 that I'm using here. Um, and actually, I, I um, it doesn't take quite as much, um, or it feels like it's not going to take as many layers as my usual drafting film. So that might be a bit of a, an issue for me. I might have to go in on the back. Um, but uh, I'm just using black on here just to start deepening up that area there a little bit. Um, I'm in total quarantine. Five more days to go. Oh, Margot, I'm sorry about that. Well, you know, at least you've got things to, to, to keep your mind occupied. Um, I bought my pencils, but not much paper. Which type of drafting film do you prefer? Katie, I prefer the um, the graphics drafting film the 0 0.005 double matte one so i buy mine from um jackson's usually um and it's just um i can get up to sort of 20 layers on there it's really this is quite flimsy this this film the the graphics drafting film is really thick it's more like a paper it's like it's like this sort of uh consistency it is really really nice to draw on um so this is the Polydraw 0.75 and it's okay um, but it just doesn't feel quite the same as the um, the graphics um, I left my goat behind but where I'm going there are some beautiful cows oh gosh oh I'm sorry about that maybe I will draw them I miss walking my goat though oh oh I love the sound of you walking your goat Margot yeah happy accidents yeah <laughs> Yeah, we all love a happy accident. I mean, I'm I'm always finding happy accidents. When I was doing the, um, I did a cat with a background and I got it in my head as to what I was going to do because I always work things out in my head first, visualise everything um, before I actually do it. And um, I'm just going to take out a little bit of, down here, I'm getting carried away and doing stuff that isn't supposed to be there. Um, and um, I'm just going to put a little bit of the edge of his ear back in here. Um, yeah, so I was doing this cat background and I got it in my head as to how I was going to do it. And um, and I did it and I was filming it and I was like, oh, yeah, no, that doesn't work at all, does it? And uh, I had a, I don't know why, but I had a roll of toilet roll on my desk <laughs> next to me. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Um, and um, it was probably, I probably brought it down from downstairs, put it down and forgot about it. Uh, and um, and I was like, oh, I wonder what will happen if I just sort of wipe it. So I, I wiped the surface with this, you know, the tissue. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, that is exactly what I wanted. So, so actually, if it hadn't have all gone a bit pear-shaped and wrong, I would never have known that using the tissue over the top of the, um, the neopastels would work. So, um, you know, that's uh, that was quite fun, actually, to do that. And quite and it was quite funny to have it all on film as well, because I'm, I'm there going, 
oh, yeah, no, this doesn't work at all, does it? <laughs> That's quite funny. So, uh, I don't know. Um, is it true that you shouldn't mix more than three colours to prevent it going muddy? That's the case with the watercolour, but not sure about pencil. Um, I will mix loads of colours. I think the thing with um, coloured pencil is not to get it muddy is um, using light pressure. The other thing as well is that certain pencils are a little bit more opaque than others. So if you have the really opaque ones, the ones that you, you put down and you can't really see um, the other layers behind it, they can go a little bit muddy if you use too hard a pressure. Um, you know, so something like a um, a light fast or a luminance are more opaque than, um, say, a, um, a polychromos. Um, you know, so uh, you've just got to you've just got to use really nice light pressure. Um, you know, although I'm saying you've got to use really nice light pressure. I've seen some artists who who have got, you know, use really, really heavy pressure and create the most beautiful, beautiful work. So it's kind of what works for you. But I find if I use light pressure, I tend to not get muddiness, um, if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to fill this ear in with black. I find it really, I was saying yesterday, I find it really difficult to fill in large areas of single colour. It just, um, I don't know. I just have this mental block. Um, I might have to use my um, drawing black. Ah, morning, Joy Jason. <laughs> That's nice of you to join me again. Oh dear, I'm looking forward to your live stream this afternoon. I really am. I was saying I've got my biscuits and my my uh, my teapot all ready for my <laughs> for my copious amounts of tea whilst I watch you. My accidents never seem to be happy. Ah, but you should learn stuff from your accidents, Maureen. You know, hopefully you will learn from them. I think that's the thing that we all have to remember is, you know, if you if you create something, it doesn't work. You know, learn from it. Um, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, then it's, you know, you're always going to get the same result. So, you know, I think accidents are good because we do learn from them. After watching yours and they look at mine and they look awful. No, they don't. No, they don't look awful. They just look different. Everybody's work is different. Um, you know, it's, it's it's very easy to compare. It is very easy to compare. And I think we all compare, um, you know, and it's and it's hard not to. Um, and, and actually we can we can become a little bit despondent and a bit sad and everything if we do too much comparing. So, um, you know, just have your little moment of feeling a bit you know down in the dumps I mean I do that all of the time I've I've just opened my Instagram and looked up at uh, the first image that came up was um, Patricia Otario I think that's her name the pastel artist and she's just done this pug and I'm like oh my god that is just the best thing and they're all like about 10 feet tall these her drawings and um, absolutely incredible and um, you know and and you and I sit there and I feel you know green with envy and then I let that pass and then I start feeling amazing that actually I can follow somebody as fantastic as her you know so um, have that little moment of um, you know green eyed monster and then and then just move on because it's not it isn't good to to be feeling those sorts of things um, you know so I, I always like to kind of flip. Any negativity, I like to flip and and feel something good. But then I am a bit annoying like that. Although it's funny when I get when I get a bit grumpy, um, you know, people get a little bit um, sort of uh, surprised when I get a bit grumpy. <laughs> so um, uh, I wish I'd bought my electric eraser. Oh yes, the electric eraser, it is, it's good. That's the same in oils too. Um, how did you manage to get Vinny to sit still for so long? Oh, he's just a really good boy, Karen. <laughs> I found myself to be lacking in patience. Oh, I have a lot of patience when it comes to, um, I don't have a lot of patience outside of my drawing, but I have a lot of patience when it comes to um, my actual pencil work. It's, um, yeah, I, I could I could just draw forever. I really could. I, I, I I've clearly found my thing um you know I think over the years you kind of find stuff don't you that really sort of resonates with you and I think with me it is most definitely the um colored pencils it's it's just 
it's what I it, it, I just use it for relaxing for you know meditative purposes all of that type of stuff I just um, I just love it I'm trying to take pigment off with a load of um, pencil dust on the end here which isn't working very well I have to use my slice tool in that so I'm just trying to get some soft hairlines coming into his little ear here um, and I'm using my Tombow to do that but what happens is the Tombow ends up with a load of pencil dust on the end of it and you uh, you end up kind of smearing it a little bit but it's just a case of using a bit harder pressure and uh, putting up with the smeary bits and then cleaning them off afterwards they don't always come off that brilliantly but um so I like to use a mixture of the slice and the um and the and my erasers just so I can get some nice sort of um soft hairs as well as more of the you know the wiry ones that I can get with the slice mm. yeah and we often be our own worst critic I know um, do I prefer working on smaller pieces or going back? I prefer bigger pieces, really. I think because I'm going a bit blind as well. <laughs> my eyes aren't very good. Um, so I have to wear my big glasses. Um, but I quite like working on big pieces because, you you know, it's it's much e or I find it's much easier to get the detail in there, um, you know, rather than sort of um, the, these tiny pieces. And that's why I stopped doing the really small commission pieces, because they take just as long as as a bigger piece. Um, and yet, you know, you, you have to charge less for them. So I just don't do the small ones. Um, you know, I prefer to work on a, on a sort of a bigger scale, really. This is all looking a bit messy. Need to go a bit like, on. oh no, that's okay. I just need to bring a little bit more of his ear in here. It's my usual substandard, um, now that's his ear there it's my substandard um need to maybe take that up just slightly um my terrible um line drawings they really are terrible i think it's here and then we've got a bit of dark in there that's a bit better and what happens is you end up kind of working towards a different line and then it all goes <laughs> it all goes wrong and then you say oh my um <laughs> my internet's gone down i'm so sorry as you as you try to put it right but i try to um i try to keep all of my the things that go wrong i try to keep all of those in my um my videos as well because I, I think it can um can just really help um you know others sort of see uh you know how to kind of rectify stuff that's one of the biggest learning points and that's when i do my um my actual physical workshops i i, I know this sounds really horrible but i love when people go wrong um because that's the biggest bit of learning is if somebody goes wrong you can um you know you can show them exactly how they can they can get it back um you know to you know to working properly um or to you know be, being happy with something um and for me those that's the 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 best thing about a workshop is um I don't know if I, I don't know best thing about a workshop is being able to help people um you know pull something back that's gone a little bit wrong and usually the feedback i get is do you know what i'd have just put it in the bin and started again um and actually you know just spending sort of like 20 minutes going through why it's gone wrong what you can do to kind of pull it back a little bit um and uh you know and then you don't have to restart whatever it is that you were doing and it's usually something really minor like just a bit of shading that's gone a bit awry um especially with it happens a lot with dogs noses but um you know it, that um that kind of thing that happens in my workshops i just love because people learn so much um you know from from a mistake and then pulling it back and being able to rectify it and it's those sorts of things that they can then take away 
and remember when they're working from home um you know rather than just sort of following on and this is what we're doing and that's why i don't really do the follow my leader type style um workshops as well i tend to sort of set people set people off and then uh come and do one-to-one um you know and sort of because everybody's got different needs and they work at different speeds and all of that type of stuff so um Da, da. I'll get a pick over to you. I'm just doing a little chaotic down here. Oh, good. brilliant. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. And you're doing such an amazing, amazing job, um, you know, with all of the um, with all of the little ponies and everything. Um, da, 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 da. Try and pass for the first time. Yeah, it is. It is. It is easy to sort of rush and everything. Um, I tend to I tend to have to sort of force myself to slow down quite a lot. Do you find sometimes that you know you've gone wrong but you can't see it? Yeah, and, and you know it, it's um it's a case of you look at something and you think oh, there's something not right there and I just don't know what it is. Um and I think a lot of us are like that. And and actually um there are some really good ways of being able to sort of spot where it is that's gone wrong and half the time i don't do it because i'm too scared to actually say yeah i've gone really wrong there and i'll need to redo it um but one of the things that i do is i'll actually take a photo of what it is that i'm drawing and i'll flip it so i'll um i'll flip the hello nice are you coming to join me in my live stream yeah, stream. yeah. Want to come and join? You're going to come and draw, draw along. No. Okay. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> um, one of the uh, yeah. So I'll take a photograph and I'll flip it. Um, and once you've flipped it, it's much easier then to see where things are a little bit out. Say if they're a bit out with perspective, or you've got something just in the wrong place, or it's slightly the wrong shape, or something like that. It's um, it's it's quite a good way of um, uh, you know, sort of being able to spot something when you when you flip it round. Because I think you've got so used to seeing something one way round that um you know when you flip it you then get to see things that have gone a bit wrong uh, i have to say you have to be a bit brave to do it because um it's it's almost like oh god the whole thing's wrong i'll have to start again <laughs> um and then the other thing you can do as well if you want to but i'm not a huge fan of doing this because I, my my um pieces are never a replica of the um photograph anyway um but um, you know you can take it in. You can take a photo, take it into Photoshop, and then layer it over the top of your actual physical photograph, and then change your um, opacity or the transparency in Photoshop, and you can actually see the um, the the physical photo underneath it, um, and then you can really see where you've you've cocked up. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's gone wrong you can really really see that then um but again i'm not a huge fan because then it is kind of like oh i've got to tweak this and i've got to tweak that and i've got to tweak the other so i don't tend to do that um because my my pieces are, are very very rarely anything like <laughs> anything like the photograph um uh your work's amazing. Thank you for being an awesome artist. Oh, that's really sweet of you. Thank you ever so much. Um, that's really kind. I'm just about to use this. This is the Staedtler Mars razor. Um, it's an eraser, but I don't use it as an I don't use it as an eraser. I use it to blend. Um, so I use it really, really gently. I find that blending on um, drafting film doesn't really work very well. Um, so using something like this um, is actually quite a good way of just smoothing out and blending things um so i i do i recommend a few different sort of types of erasers and stuff to to use with the drafting film but um this one is i recommend as something to blend with this is all looking a little bit messy but i don't care it's fine vincent is messy he's um he's a bit revolting at the minute he's he's um he's nine months and he's I probably shouldn't be saying this. It sounds horrible, but he's just started to to lift his cock his leg when he's when he's going for a wee. But he can't kind of he can't kind of um, sort of tilt his body over. So he's lifting his leg, and then he's just weeing all over his front legs. 
<laughs> so we go for a walk and then he has to come home and he has to have a bit of a wash um he's just you know <laughs> i'm like Vinny, you've got to you've got to lift your leg higher mate you know you've got to just sort of tilt your pelvis a little bit but no he doesn't get it bless him <laughs> he's a funny old boy um do you ever put your image into mono to see where you need to deepen contrast yeah i do sometimes but um i tend to be um I I think I've got to the point where I'm where I'm quite happy with how my uh, values kind of work, um, but I think that's a really really good trick as well. Um, you know, to do is to work with the um, you know to turn it into mono, and then you can actually see where your light bits need to be lighter, your dark bits need to be darker. Um, you know, that's another really really good trick. If you're if you struggle with your values, that's another really good. Um, thing to do um, but for me I tend to um, I tend to do the flipping thing just to make sure I've got everything in the right places do you prefer drafting film to pastel map oh gosh I get asked this a lot actually um, I'm very fickle so uh, when I'm working on drafting film I will always prefer working on drafting film but then when I'm working on pastel mat I would prefer working on that pastel mat so it depends which one I'm working on as to which is my favorite they both have amazing qualities um, drafting film I love working on texture and sort of fluffy fur but saying that I'm about to draw a big uh, ram on pastel mat um, and it's got some fantastic texture in its horns and, you know, like really, really close knit woolly fur, um, you know, on its face. Um, and I'm doing that on pastel mat. Um, and I kind of weighed up, um, you know, should I do it on drafting film? Should I do it on pastel mat? Which would be the better? And for me, because I find doing sort of relatively um, smooth textures i find it quite um a little bit more tricky to do that on the drafting film so um i i i prefer to use um pastel mat for for things where it's got a smoother texture um which it seems a bit odd really because pastel mat is much more textured um but um yeah so I've, I, that's what i've decided to do do it on the um on the pastel mat and then i like to do things that are a little bit more textured on the um, drafting film uh, the eraser you're using looks brilliant yeah uh, the, this one is the tombow this is the tombow mono 2.3 um, eraser and then i've got this one which is an eraser but isn't really erased uh, very well on the film this is the stapler mars razor and then i've also got um i've also got this one which is the derwent pencil eraser um, and then I've got a, I don't know where it is though, um, I've got the Faber-Castell, I don't know where that one is, the Faber-Castell Perfection Pink Eraser, and that one's really good. Um, but I don't know where that one is, because I'm rubbish at keeping all of my supplies together. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit more blue in here. Again, the, um, the luminance are pretty good at just sort of smudging and blending it on the drafting film i left my drafting film behind too every day i wake up and feel oh no oh that's so sad Margot. what was the white tipped thing you were using it's an eraser to take away layers this one this one this is just a little eraser, tiny little eraser it's got a, a tiny little uh, round erase a bit in the end and then this one that's the mars uh the stapler mars razor and that's the one that i use for blending rather than taking out um would you recommend drafting film from white curly dog yeah i would yeah i really would recommend drafting film from white curly dog but then i'd recommend um uh, uh, pastel mat as well I, I i love doing white on white um all of my uh, pale colored animals are done on white um i just think it looks lovely and subtle um you can use the white paper to help with your highlights um you know in there anyway i just think it's a it's a no-brainer for me so i'm just going to use my slice tool now just to bring in a few of these little hairy bits in here 
Let's see how this works. So the uh, this is the manual pen cutter from Slice, um, and it's got a it's got a chisel shaped blade. Um, and I was I've I've just done a video actually on how to use it. So I tend to use it upside down in my hand, turn it to the left, and then sort of you can see where the pigments come off there. I scrape from the edge rather than doing a cutting motion. Um, and what's really nice about this is that you can get you know loads of lovely textured detail in there. Uh, you can really control it. It's it's um, it's safer than using a scalpel. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using a scalpel or you know something like that. Um, but this is a little bit kinder um, on your paper. Um, you know, and it works really really well with the um, with the drafting film. My problem here is I'm trying to move my hand and it's um, it's not in the best position here to. I want to swizz my um, piece round really, but um, and then I can just go back in again and start to build in a little bit more darkness around it. And you can see when I go over the top, it leaves the line. But if I really wanted to, I could fill that line in, or I could go in on the back. Um, but it's just really nice to be able to add that little bit of texture. It just adds a bit more depth as well. And you can get in there and start to get some really nice um, deep shadows. Um, because just adding these little lines in gives you a little bit more opportunity to find areas of shadow that um, you maybe didn't have before. So I'm using quite hard pressure in there. I have to admit I'm being a bit scribbly with this, but he's a bit of a scribbly dog. That's a good name actually, isn't it, for a, for a deer hound scribble. I have to get another one and call it a scribble. Um, need to get some of those. Oh, that's okay. Um, need one of the cutting tools. Yeah, they are good. Oh no, Margot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this isn't a nice experience for you at all. Everything that I mentioned you've left behind. I'm so sorry. Well, hopefully you haven't got that long left in isolation. So you'll be able to go back and, um, you know, my hair is dried up in the towel. Can't stop watching it to sort it out. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh dear. I um I tend to um I go to bed with my hair wet. So I I uh, I end up going to bed really quite late. Have have a shower, uh, wash my hair, and then um I, I just put a towel on my pillow and I go to bed with my hair wet. And then in the morning, oh my god, um it's just this crazy mass of. Um, curls it's um it's bonkers i always used to have really straight hair when i was little and now it's just sort of this gingery mass of curls um so i just tie it up well i'm saying gingery gingery gray <laughs> um so uh, yeah it just all looks a bit it all looks a bit odd right okay so that is looking all right i probably need to come in and darken this on the back which i think i might do at some point um, let's bring a little bit more so you can see you don't have to spend ages and ages getting all of that detail and you can actually just put you know do it quite quickly really um, and it, it you know being a little bit looser with things is is quite nice um, you know because we do a lot of us do get hung up on on detail and trying to get everything absolutely perfect but um, you know, just having a little bit of a play and getting it a little bit looser is, um, it works quite nicely actually. Now, uh, I think I've gone a bit too far in with those bits there. Just pull them in a bit. This is me with my useless line drawings. I'm much, I'm much better working freehand um, than working with a line drawing really. It's, um, I just find it easier. I get so confused with all of the lines everywhere. I never know what I'm doing. Um, another oh, thanks, Sarah. Have you ever have you been ever tempted to have a go at digital art? Um, do you know what I used to do? Um, I used to be a Photoshop retoucher, so um, I used to create all sorts of different things in Photoshop, um, and um, I. Uh, I really like digital art I, I, and I tend to watch, I, I, 
I have quite a lot of digital artists uh, that I follow on Instagram um, and I, I find it absolutely fascinating, um, you know, watching them and how they create it. Um, but um, I'm not sure I want to, I'm not sure I want to do that. I don't think, I don't think I've got the passion to do it. I think I need to, I need to be passionate about something to be able to, um, you know, start doing it. And I'm, I'm still learning so much about coloured pencils and different techniques and everything that um I just think I'm not sure really I don't think I don't think I'd I don't think I'd do it but I love to watch it and I th I think it's incredible how you know talented these people are using the, the you know the different um the different techniques and everything it's um yeah I think it's amazing to watch I really like to watch it but um not sure not sure that I would I'm just going to move that up slightly again move it up or move it down not sure that I've got that in the right place maybe move it up I never know um, I can't see my screen so I'm just going to put a few of these little wafty bits in here so you can see I'm using a really blunt pencil um, and um, if you know me and my work, you'll know that I hardly ever sharpen my pencils unless I'm doing something like eyes or something. I just tend to work with really blunt pencils. Um, I find it easier on the drafting film if I'm drawing hair like this because I don't get any really um, tiny lines. Um, and, and also because I, I am I do say it quite a lot I am very lazy but on the um, on the drafting film for the hair like this it's it's easy to get the soft look with a blunt pencil um, you know because if you've got a really sharp pencil in there and you're trying to get all of this hair in it's um, you're just going to get some really 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 sharp lines in there which is kind of against what this hair is about because this hair is soft um, So that's what I'm trying to uh, trying to get here and get sort of like bring some of the texture in as well. But the, the more so just getting that color in um, so that we can just get a feel for his little head. And then I can come in and start to sort of create a little bit more texture in there afterwards. He's looking a bit mad at the minute. <laughs> um, but I'll, uh, I'll come in and start to sort of weave in a little bit of... Um, a little bit of texture and some wiriness in there as well but I mean for this piece as well it's quite nice to sort of you know be doing things quite speedily quite quickly um, you know because not everybody wants to sit for hours and hours and you know pour into the into the details and if we can do something quite quickly it's quite nice um, I can use a very, very basic of Photoshop, but it overwhelms me. Oh, you see, I can use, I can use, um, I can use, um, oh, I've just had a message to say that our new puppy is now in a bright pink collar. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I hope she sent me a picture of her. Um, uh, yes, I can use Photoshop. I do use Photoshop, um, but I tend to use it the old fashioned way. So I was using it back in the late 80s up into the sort of mid 2000 and whatever's um so um i tend to do things the, the the way that i used to do them which and there's so many more different functionalities now that you, you know you probably be able to do things a much much more quicker and easier but i still tend to use things this the, the the old way um but i i mean i've got the adobe suite anyway i use um i use uh indesign and uh uh Lightroom and you know all of those uh, types of things as well as Photoshop um, I, I you know it's it's what I used to use so it's kind of second nature to me really and it means I can do all of my own I can do all of my own workbooks and all of that type of stuff so what I'm saying I do all of my workbooks the amazing Evie is working on my workbooks at the moment bless her um, so she's she's in uh, she's in Nottingham with her family and she's still working on all of my stuff so uh lovely girl that she is so yeah so i should have some more workbooks coming out and then i'm still waiting for my um website to be updated 
um, and then hopefully I'll be able to start selling some of my tutorials online but it's just taken a little bit longer because the the company that's doing my website are, um, are doing a lot of marketing material for other companies you know around the virus and everything so um, it's it's not on hold but it's a little bit slower than um, than we'd hoped which is is fine it doesn't matter um funny on the drafting film do you ever use the other side i do i do i do i do so let's have a quick look in fact i just want to look at, oh i can see it there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to flip it um make sure you can see it so i've flipped it over and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some dark oh Vinny. Uh, I'm going to put some dark in here, so I'm just going to go in on the back. Oh, I've got a video of the puppy. Oh, gosh, so exciting! It's brilliant. She sends me, um, she sends me updates every every day. Mostly, it's um, <laughs> and the children are like, oh, we had a video of the puppy. Have we had a video of the puppy? So we're all very excited about that. We keep telling Slipper, but she doesn't seem that excited. I'm just going in here on the back and I'm just going to make this a bit darker here as well. So what's nice about the drafting film is that you can go, you can use the reverse as like for additional layers. Um, and the other thing that you can do as well is you can add um, colour in on the back. You know, so if you want like a nice soft glow or something like that, you can add your colour in. The little mouse that I did, um, the one that I called Alternative View, um, that one I did the whole of the wash of the background on the back um, and then um, did the details and everything on the front um, and that worked really really well so I sent that one to my um, it was quite nice actually I put that it was sold on my Instagram and um, I sent it to my sister for her birthday as a surprise and it was so nice to get her reaction because she'd actually asked her husband if he, he'd get it for her for her birthday. And then she'd seen on my Instagram that it was sold and she was really sad. And then she got to open it as a surprise on her birthday. So that was really nice. She sent me this lovely photo. So um, that was that was really nice. OK, so I've gone in on the back there. And then if I just flip that back over... I'm hoping you can see that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you can see that that's um, much darker. Um, so we've got a much darker bit there now, which is really nice. Um, a new puppy, another biggie. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited. Uh, another Newfoundland poodle. Um, so it's actually slippers. Uh, half sister so same mum different dad and she's like a chocolatey brown colour so um, we couldn't we just couldn't not get one um, because Slipper is the most amazing dog ever and when I heard that she was having there was some little sisters and everything I was just like oh my god we've got to have one so we're we're going to have one which is completely mad because they take over your life and everything but hey you know there's always space for another giant dog <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying anyway i'm sure i'll be cursing them and um you know when she, when she arrives and it all goes a bit ha hairy but uh hey um don't understand drafting form what is it what's it used for i've only ever you drawn on paper oh hi katie nice to have you on here um a drafting film is um it's basically a what i'm drawing on here don't know whether you can see let's just pull it down from the top a little bit so maybe you can kind of see um you can see the the back there very slightly it's a it's a semi-transparent film and usually it's used for drafts people you know so architects that type of stuff you know for blueprints and things like that um usually that's what it's used for um but the matte uh, drafting you can get it all in all sorts of different coatings um but the matte drafting film is um really really nice for colored pencil work um you know and it takes the pencils really really well so um 
a, a lot of artists use it. Um, I think I first saw it being used from Karen Hull, um, an Australian artist, amazing artist. And I first saw her using it in 2006 and decided to have a, a you know, a bit of a, a bit of a play with it. Um, and it's just it's just an alternative surface. And the thing for me is I really don't get on with smooth paper. Um, which is why I love pastel mat. But the drafting film, I really love. Um, and it just gives me an alternative. Um, it just gives me an alternative surface to work on, um, you know, other than the pastel mat. Um, and it's um, it's really, really fun to work on. It's really uh, flexible, um, you know, so you can use different mediums on it. So some people use pan pastels on it. I tend to use colour pencil combined with the, the um, neo pastel and the neo colour, um, and it's just it, it it it's just a really really nice surface. It takes a bit of getting used to because it doesn't blend like your normal papers would, um, but you can get some fantastic details in there. Um, it's just it's just a really really nice surface. I would recommend people try it. You know some people try it and hate it um but it's um yeah i really like it i really like it um right i'm gonna use a bit of the paint i am gonna need a much bigger home <laughs> they're just taking over bless them but um yeah i love my doggies they annoy me you know they they annoy me so much sometimes but but 90 99 i love them <laughs> It's not so bad at the moment when the weather's dry. It's when it gets really wet, having a big hairy dog, um, that's that can be a little bit, a bit trying. Right, so we need to get a little bit darker down here. I use Stonehenge at the moment. Oh, I love Stonehenge. Um, not been brave enough to try anything else. I've only been using colour pens for a year, so it's still quite new. Fan your videos. Oh, thank you, Katie. Well, um. Stonehenge, I, I did start on Stonehenge and it's a really good paper, uh, good quality. It's got the, the, the good co cotton content and everything like that. It's a it's a really nice paper. And I would say, you know, if you're enjoying using something, then just, you know, there's there's no there's no real reason to, to swap. Um, you know, it's uh, let's bring that down just a touch. Um, you know, it's quite good to have a play with different surfaces, but, um, you know, if you like something then, and it's working for you, then, you know, um, why change? You know, and I think us as artists, we, we were a little bit like magpies, aren't we? We're like, oh, gosh, so-and-so's using that. I'm going to have a go at that. So-and-so's using that, um, you know. But, um, you know, if you find something that works for you, then uh, that's that's really good. Okay. So I'm just going to come in and darken up these areas here now. So I, I'm 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 okay with this film. It's not um I I'm not in I'm not getting exactly the same results as I would with my drafting film, but it's it's okay. It's um, I think the erasing bit. It's not erasing as well as um, the the uh, the graphics drafting film does, but that's you know that's okay. Uh, and and sometimes things don't quite work out how um, you want them to. And sometimes they they actually change the paper or they change the manufacturing process of the paper that you you're used to working on. That can be really frustrating. And you just got to kind of uh, work out. A different way of doing it really um you know and moving from one one paper to another can you know it can be frustrating because you've kind of got to, you've got to get to grips with a whole new set of techniques really and that can be um you know that can be quite quite testing you know especially if you're used to something working and then all of a sudden it doesn't that can be quite quite irritating Let me just go back in here a little bit. Just bring in a bit of those. So you can see I'm mostly just concentrating on um, texture and sort of get, getting these colour areas blocked in. 
rather than trying to be really detailed. Need a little bit more blue in there. Really need that silver blue. I need to go and search for it. And then we'll use this Payne's Grey. Is it Payne's Grey 30? Um, the luminance are such nice pencils. They really are lovely, lovely pencils. And the, the colours that they, they have are um, they're just so useful. You know, they have these sort of percentages of colours um, and they, they're just really, really useful to have. I have to admit, I sent off for a set of the um, Lyra Rembrandt Polycolour um, this morning. 72 pencils for £58, I think it was. We were talking about it on a Patreon Zoom um, the other night. And um, use a bit of this... Uh, dark indigo in here um yeah we were talking about them and um you know somebody was asking what they were like so i thought well i'll, I'll get a set and i'll um, i'll have a try because they, they are apparently supposed to be good quality uh good light fast good pigmentation so i thought i'd have a have a bit of a play because they're um you know if they're good um then um you know for 58 pounds for a for a set of 72 that is that is good going you know especially if somebody's on sort of like a tighter budget um, and so I've um, I've ordered some. Um, thank you, Sylvia. That's really kind of you. I've only used this poly draw, found it in my drawer after about twenty years. <laughs> it's all sealed up. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> that's really good. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind poly draw at all. This is the point seven five, which is one that I haven't used before. I, you, you tend to use the point five zero poly draw. Um, uh, but I, I, uh, the drafting film is definitely my favourite. The graphics drafting film point zero zero five. That's definitely my favourite. Sent a cross face by mistake. <laughs> That's all right, Valerie. Oh dear, I don't get upset with. Uh, I don't get upset with stuff like that. It's you know it's so easy. I've done that before. I've put like a you know the the hilariously laughing face instead of something else, and I was like, oh quick quick edit it edit it, um, and it's just it's um, they're all so close together, aren't they? When you try and um, hit the the button, um, you know I've always got fat fingers, so I'm always hitting the wrong buttons, and then you write a load of stuff, and then you it's full of spelling mistakes. <laughs> So, uh, and my spelling's usually pretty good, and my grammar's pretty good as well. I'm a bit, um, I, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a stickler for grammar, but then I end up with, um, you know, Facebook auto correcting what I what I put, and all my grammar goes to pot. So, all right, so let's get a little bit more in here. So these these sort of wiry haired doggies are um, they are fun to draw, and just getting your colouring in the right place and your shading in the right place is going to really help you get the form of the dog underneath it. Because I think sometimes that's what we forget is that there's an actual dog underneath all of the hair. Um, I think I've got probably need to come in a little bit more with the black in there. Let's come in there a bit. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna get my my ram on the go um after I've done a little bit more on this. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So another really nice photo from I think it's Edward Payne is the photographer. Um and it's just its face, close up of its face. Um so it's gonna be gonna be a good one. And then I'm good doing a swan as well which I'm looking forward to. Well, I'm saying I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I've kind of got in my head what I think is going to work, but whether it does or not, <laughs> who knows? So again, let's just bring a little bit of more darkness in here. And again, I'm using quite scribbly strokes here because because he is messy. Um, you know, I don't want to be really, really, really tidy with what I'm drawing because he's not a tidy dog. Um, you know, and if I can kind of replicate his sort of fur with my pencil strokes, then it's um, you're more likely to be able to pick up um, 
the the texture and the quality of the fur you know I, I tend to visualize what the fur will look like when I'm drawing it so if I'm drawing something that's got really long hair and like you know like a spaniel with silky ears my pencil strokes are going to be long and silky um, and I tend to I tend to sort of if this sounds a bit weird and a bit a bit I don't know um but I tend to sort of set my breathing as well um you know if I'm drawing long sort of silky strokes then my breathing tends to become slower um you know I just 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 my whole I, I guess I kind of bring my whole body into it <laughs> um which sounds really weird but um that's kind of uh I don't know whether that's right or not I don't know I'm probably talking a little rubbish and there will be people out there going, yes, you are talking a load of rubbish, Bonnie. My daughter said this morning, she said, Mum, you talk so much rubbish. Um, you know, she said, you just think you know stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I've just got an opinion on things. <laughs> I don't think I know stuff at all. I don't know anything. Um, but... Uh, um, reaching for my razor just watching this I could never do anything like this live oh <laughs> I love doing stuff live I I, I'm, I must admit I, I am that sort of person um, I it's quite daunting when you first when you first start doing it um, but um, you know it, if you go wrong it doesn't matter because you know we're all human and we're all and and people who are watching you are probably wanting to learn so you going wrong is a really great learning experience and nobody well there might be some people but the majority of people aren't sitting watching you hoping you're going to go wrong they're sitting cheering you on and really enjoying it um you know so if you do go wrong it's like oh, you know who cares <laughs> it doesn't matter does it you know we're all human um but um, you've also said you are going to buy another Vinny. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm going to buy another Vinny. Um, we love we love Vinny, um, but um, yeah, I'm not sure I could cope with two of him. <laughs> He's a funny old thing. He's so funny when you tell him to sit. He can't just sit down. He has to kind of take about ten steps backwards and then sit down. So you'll be in the kitchen, and you'll tell him to sit. And he'll go and sit down in the lounge. It's just the weirdest dog. <laughs> it's so funny. Bless him. He finds it really hard to kind of... Um, Slip is very floppy, whereas Vincent is really rigid. He's a very rigid dog. I guess that's because of, you know, his, his physicality, I guess. Um, you know, he's very, very fast, but he's, um, he's not a floppy dog at all. Whereas flippers very flipper, slippers very floppy. Um. Oh, but yeah, I do. I do enjoy doing the live, the live stuff. And I'm kind of, I guess, I'm kind of used to talking to myself now as well. Um, you know, doing doing all of my tutorials and everything. I've had sort of just over a year of of doing probably about 70 hours worth of recording each month so you do get to you do get to kind of um you know you do kind of get get used to it um you know it's just when you've if you're not you know if you've got a cough or something like that and you know or if i lose my voice if i'm if i'm going to get ill it tends to be um it goes to my chest and i lose my voice touch wood um, you know, but um, you kind of get used to, you know, saying stuff. So it's, um, you know, I quite I quite like doing the live. I mean, I do live streams all of the time, but it's, it's a bit unfair on the children because I have to make them be quiet. So doing it earlier in the morning is good because they're all they all tend to be still in bed. I just switched on how do you put lighter hair on top of the darker oh so um because this is drafting film um claire i can go over the top with an eraser and you, you'd be able to do this um the same with using um you know other papers as well but i use uh, an eraser so this is the um the tombow that i'm using here just get rid of some of that pigment on there so it just gets all caught up on the end um 
and you just sort of drag it in over the top i'm not going to be able to get much um semblance over this because i put dark in on the um on the other side but um you know just using the eraser in there and again to bring in sort of like some of the details into this uh these hairs here you know i can put some nice detail into here um, and just give it a little bit more texture um, with the eraser which is really nice the only thing with the eraser is you get all of the pencil dust on the end and it can kind of go a bit smeary um, or you can use your um, slice tool oh thank you the ear looks a bit messy <laughs> but then he is messy so that's okay um, I have a springer and a cocker accidentally mated and now I have two of the puppies Ah, oh, I bet they're gorgeous. Puppies and Ilya rolled and mum and dad are coming up for two. I would love to have a go at drawing them all. Oh, you should. You should definitely. Um, you should definitely draw them. Can you lift off with the tip of the scalpel? Yes, you can. So I've got, so I don't use a scalpel. I use this. This is the slice um, manual pen cutter that I use. And it's got the ceramic blade. Um, and I can just come in here. You can see. And I can start to add in. Oops. pigment and everything here and I can sort of add sweepy lines if I want to or I can be really quite precise and take out some of the colour in here so if I wanted to sort of take out a precise bit of hair in here I can just go really gently wipe that off for you and I can get some lovely lovely details in there and that's why I kind of just whack all of the colour in to begin with and then use my erasing tools to kind of get all of those lovely thing, lovely uh, lines in there. So some people use the slice, you know, just for sort of like a bit of highlight, um, you know, maybe to add a whisker in or something like that. With my drafting film work, I tend to use the slice a lot um, and I'll use it gently um, because I don't want my pieces to look like they've got all like cut marks in them. Um, what I'm wanting is I'm wanting some really nice fur lines and the the slice tool works like a dream it's it's the most fantastic tool and yes I am an ambassador for slice but um, only just and I've been using I've been using their tool for a couple of years now um, you know and I I'm a huge advocate of this tool I just think it's fantastic um, you know it's um it just gives you that little bit extra, um, you know, to be able to create, to make things easier, really. You know, it really does make make for um, creating lovely, lovely detail. Um, now, I don't use it on absolutely everything and I don't go I don't go crazy, crazy mad with it. Um, you know, so my pencils are still the main um, the main tool that I use. But it's just, you know, it's another thing that just, it just really helps. It really helps, um, you know. So, oh, oh, hi, Antonia, how are you? I've been looking at your gorgeous work as well. I'm a huge fan of yours. So I think we've been doing some oil painting recently as well, which I'm in awe of. All of these artists who use these different, um, you know, different mediums. And I'm just stuck with colour pencil. <laughs> So, but I just, I'm quite a, um, I'm, I'm very, uh, what's the word? Loyal. <laughs> I'm just very loyal to my coloured pencils. I feel very guilty when I use anything else. Even when I was using the, um, the Nia colour, um, you know, I felt a bit guilty. But then they work really nicely, so I, I stopped feeling guilty. Um, but I am quite, I am quite loyal to my pencils, I have to admit. If you don't mind sharing what brand of pencils i've been out sketching for a while just curious oh so i use i use quite a lot of different pencils um oops knocking the uh microphone there i use quite a lot of different um uh, pencils um adrian i use so i use the these are the luminance um and then i use the polychromos the faber castell polychromos i've got some pablos this is a pablo caran dash pablo oops and then I've got a, what else have I got? I've got a uh, Derwent drawing. So I love the Derwent pencils. Derwent drawing. And then I've also got, uh, let's have a look. Um, 
I've also got the Derwent Lightfast. They are beautiful, beautiful pens. This one is amazing. I just put this is the Scarlet Derwent uh, Lightfast. This pencil is like drawing with lipstick. Uh, I'm not going to put any on Vinny. <laughs> I might put some lipstick on his little mouth. But um, the Lightfast are oh they are gorgeous pencils. I don't really use them on the drafting film, but on the pastel mat, oh my god, they are fantastic. Um, and then I use what else do I use? I use the Derwent um, Studios. So this is another firm favourite of mine. Um, they're really hard, wax based. I really, really like these pencils. Um, to put a little bit of that in there. They're just a lot more subtle than the um, than the other colours. So you don't get as much pigment, which means that you can use a little bit harder pressure um, and be a, a touch more precise in where you're putting your colour down. Um, you know, so the studios are a big, a big favourite of mine. Um, you know, I, I mean, I really love the Derwent pencils. Um, they, um, they're good quality, you know, they're, they're light fast, all of that type of stuff. So I tend to use a mixture of the different, the different brands. Um, you know, uh, just, Vinny, what are you doing? Just because... I don't know. I quite I like the feel of some of them. I like the colours of some of them. So, you know, I just kind of um, I'd, I'd use a mishmash of all of them, really. Um, and they all tend to work very, very nicely. You feel guilty, too. <laughs> yeah, I feel so guilty. I do feel so guilty when I'm when I'm, you know, talking about, you know, trying a different medium out. I'm like, oh, my God, how, how can I possibly? I love my colour pencils. So, um, and yet I don't feel I don't feel guilty about changing papers. Not that I change very often, but um, you know. But my pencils are very precious to me. They are very precious to me. Um, I just need to sort this eye out a little bit. I think it needs to be a bit. That's a bit better. I think my 15 year old son has woken up we're going to be hearing some singing very shortly she's quite nice because he's got a very nice little voice he's um he's he oh he's into so many different musics but he, he sings a lot of frank sinatra which is funny <laughs> yeah funny boy right um i need to i really need to look for that steel blue a bit annoying. What's that? That's green. I don't want green. Oh well. Yeah, I love the studios. I I really love the studios. They've got the most fantastic colours. Um, the the reason I got into the studios was I um back at the beginning of two thousand and nineteen, I um invested in some critique from uh the amazing artist Aaron Gad. Uh, uh amazing pencil color pencil artist if you haven't if you haven't seen his work you should really see his work um it's aaron just with one a and gad with two d's um and um i invested i i you know i invested quite a bit of money in some in, in having some professional critique from him um and it was the best the best money I've spent, I have to say, because, um, you know, he had no agenda. He was being completely honest. If something was good, he would tell me it was good. If something, um, you know, needed to be changed, he would tell me that, you know, it needed to be changed. Um, it just was, um, I'm just going to move my phone over a little bit and, and uh, switch it on. Um, it was just the best um, money I've spent. Um, and he introduced me to the studios. Um, and the reason he introduced me to the studios was because of the colour, um, you know, and he was saying for my animal drawings, it would be a really, it would be really beneficial if I started to use the studio colours because they are so, they're such good browns in the studio range. Um, and that's where, that's where I started to use it. Um you know, and they they are super super pencils. They're not to everybody's taste because they are quite hard, but um, you know they um, they made a big difference to my work. I have to say. 
so I really like them. And they're not overly expensive either. So I like to, I like to just sort of mix them in a little bit. Right, I'm going to use a bit of this blue in here. So I'm fat and I'm going to just use a bit of the oops Tombow up here and just bring a little bit more. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a feel for his hair rather than um, rather than copy the photograph exactly and just get some of that texture in there. So I do like using my eraser a lot to draw. I think it um, it sort of suits my techniques really. And we'll just bring a little bit more into here. You can see I'm not being particularly careful. Um, which I know isn't everybody's everybody's style. I know that, um, you know, we all work very differently, um, you know, and, and actually sort of loosening up a little bit. Um, you know, it's quite, it's quite nice to do, but I know it. I know it's it's not the easiest thing. It's it's not a case of just going, oh, I'm just going to go a little bit looser here because it doesn't it doesn't really work like that. You know, if you're quite a controlled person, um, you know, with your with your pencil drawings, you're going to find it quite, quite tricky to be able to loosen up. Um, not sure why I've put those in there because they don't really work like that. But hey, we can we can cover those up. Okay, and then I'm going to take the, this is the Mars razor again, and I'm just going to, it's a, it's an eraser, but I don't use it as an eraser. I use it as something to just um, blend. And the hair on top of his head is sort of, is quite hairy, but it's, it's soft. So um, those are razor lines that I've just put in with the Tombow. I just want to soften them off a little bit. So I'm using this one to, um, and just blend it all in a touch. I think it needs to be free to be personal. Control is great, but personal. Um, yeah, yeah, it is very personal. Um, you know, and I and I know from running workshops, you know, you'll have people who are, um, you know. Uh, uh, find it find it really really um challenging to be a little bit looser um you know and to sort of let let go a little bit and you know that's that's fine it's all to do with personality um you know feelings all of that type of stuff so so being able to um you know understand that people work in a different way is really important i think if you're going to be teaching it's really important to be able to realize that that not everybody works in the same way that you do um so what what then happens is you then have to find ways of being able to explain what you're doing in you know like if you're running a workshop and you've got 20 people in there you've got to be able to explain your technique in 20 different ways um you know so um it's it's it is it's 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 tricky um but it's so rewarding Oh, thanks, Brenda. Yeah, I'll probably be here, still here. <laughs> when you come back tomorrow, I'll still be here. Um, and it's I'm I'm not I'm not um, I'm not live streaming because I want um, you know I want all of the attention. I'm live streaming just because I like to chat, um, you know. And um, and because this is a a piece that I've kind of shared with you when you were drawing along, then it's it, you know it's quite nice to be able to share a little bit more of him. So I just bit more in there. That's looking that's looking okay, I think. So we'll think we'll just put get a little bit more in on top of the head there. Let's put a bit of this cold so this cold grey four. Let's put a little bit more in here. That's actually worked quite nicely where I've put um where I've kind of taken some of the hair out and then uh you know blended it a little bit with that Mars razor. That's worked quite well actually. Oh gosh, we started to watch um, Tiger King last night on Netflix. 
crikey is all I can say if you've been watching it it's like oh my goodness it's the um it's the most bizarre series um about this chap who um has tigers and breeds tigers and I think he's in prison now but it is it is weird really really weird and it's sort of um it, it, you don't really want to watch it but you keep watching it <laughs> It's, um, yeah, it is very strange. It just kind of pulls you in and you just sit there going, oh my God, is this real? I mean, one of his, one of the people that works for him, she had her arm ripped off by a tiger and it's just, um, it's just all, it's like a, another world. It's, um, it's so weird. <laughs> so, but we've got a date with um, uh, Pride and Prejudice. Um, I've told my daughter that we're going to watch Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth. Uh, this evening so um our chinese is still delivering which is brilliant so we're going to have our friday night takeaway and um oh actually we'll be watching watching a bit of goggle box we'll be watching friday night dinner and then uh we'll be watching pride and prejudice so we watched emma the other day um on amazon and that was really good it's just kind of it, it, it's so nice because nothing happens there's no nastiness there's no nothing <laughs> it's just really nice so i thought we'd do a little bit more of that Um, I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. I might have to just pull him down a little bit more. Push that up a bit so we can do this head bit. Let's get these crazy, crazy tufts in here on this ear. Again, sort of quite, you know, quite nice and loose and soft. So it's all very grey, but we can just put, go in and put like bits of colour in there and you know, it doesn't really matter um, what colours we use. So he's got some quite nice uh, bits of hair coming in here that we'd, we need to sort of bring in a bit. Don't even know what time it is. I don't even know what time I started, to be honest. I'll do a little bit more hair and then I think I'll um, go and grab a cup of tea and, uh, and start my um, start my ram. So let's get a little bit more uh, darkness around his eye um, and then uh, just because this is in this is there's a lot of shadow around this eye. So I'm just going to get a little bit more into here. So just nice and um, nice light, light pressure. I know it's it's very tiring in seeing it. So apparently it's going to be really lovely weather here this afternoon. Apparently it's going to be really hot. So um, the doggies are going to get a bath. So I've got a. Um, the tap I've got in my garage, my amazing son has put a hot water tap in there as well. And we can actually um, regulate the temperature so I can turn the temperature right down so the dogs can actually be showered with the hose using warm water, which is amazing. Um, so apparently it's going to be really nice and warm. So we're going to move the cars onto the road and um, give them both a bath because Vincent's disgusting and Slipper could do with a bath. So, uh, and then just let them run around in the front, the front garden, hopefully. Well, that's my, that's what I've, that's what I visualised. Actually, what will happen will be a very different uh, scenario, I guess. Vincent doesn't like being bathed, so he'll be sort of trying to get, get away from me. Okay, just get a little bit more dark in here. This this eye was quite um, was quite tricky to draw because it's um, it's in a lot of shadow. Um, actually, I probably need to I probably need to bring a little bit more light into there. But it was um, this side of his face is in quite a lot of shadow. It's quite dark. Um, 
and it's it's always a bit hard um you know when you've got a when you've got a, a photograph and you your the eyes are there's not a huge amount of detail in the eye or it doesn't really look like a proper eye it's always look a bit hard but um I mean, I'm seeing all of the pictures coming up on um, social media and they all look amazing. Broke my right hand last week. Oh no, Claire, that's no good. Well, thank goodness that you're um, left-handed. Um, you know, because that's not, um, that would be awful if you were um, right-handed and you couldn't do anything. I had a lovely memory come up on um, Facebook this morning of my old um, ex-racer, Rocky, um, uh, jumping. So uh, that was quite nice to see. I can't believe it's seven years ago. Madness. Whizzing around the arena and jumping stuff. I used to do loads of show jumping. I struggle to walk now, let alone ride. <laughs> okay, so keeping this quite dark down here. And then again, just watching where all my fur and everything's going, the direction of my fur. Still being quite sort of scribbly as well. I can just get a little bit of detail into there. This needs to be darker here, the top of it light. Yeah, so this the the, the poly draw definitely this point seven five definitely doesn't take as many layers as the um, as the drafting film. I've only just caught this gutted. I missed the start. Oh, that's okay. Is it easy to frame the film the, yourself, or does it have to be done by professional? Oh, um, no, you can do it yourself. The thing with film is, particularly this type of film that I'm using, is it's quite flimsy. So um, what you have to do is d um, don't be tempted to try and tape it all down, tape all of the sides down, because what happens is it, it will end up going um, a little bit... Just move that, shunt that over just slightly. Ooh, there goes my phone. Back here. Um, oops. Yeah, what's going on? Hold on. Just need to see all your mess. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, what happens is it um, it will it will uh, it will buckle a little bit. So it can end up rippling. Um, so you are better off just to sort of tape it just with one little bit of tape at the top um, and make sure that you back it with whatever paper that you want behind it. Because if you put different coloured paper and everything behind this film, it will look different. So I could put black paper behind it or I could put cream paper behind it and it will look, you know, different again. So, um, but no, it's easy to do. Um, just don't be tempted to tape it all down, strap it all down because... It, it may end up rippling. Well, it will end up rippling. Um, you know, I mean, I have all of my pieces mounted professionally um, just because I can't be bothered to do it myself. Um, it's not something I want to get into. So I, I, I pay to have mine done. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Iona, Iona. I think that's how you pronounce pronounce your name. I don't know. I'm I'm rubbish with being able to pronounce people's names, but I hope that's how I pronounce it. Um, right. So I need a little bit more black in here. More dark in there. And don't be scared to go, you know, quite dark if you need to, because, um, you know, that's going to really help, especially if you've got something that is in shadow. You know, you do need to go quite dark. And don't be too scared about using black either. I use black all of the time. If I've got black in my hand, I'll use it. <laughs> Uh, right, 
so I'm just going to put a little bit more hair in oops um, around here and this is just a polychromous warm gray that I'm using here and what I'm what I'm doing is I'm just going to um, block in color rather than try and draw details and then I'll put the details in afterwards um, take them out either with the slice tool or with my eraser it's just much easier I've seen something about my sister what has she done do, do, do. oh gosh that's amazing so my sister is um um, my sister has been deployed to the front line of one of the um, COVID wards, um, and she's just she's just been saying how um, how amazing all of the staff and everything are. So that's uh, just it's just uh, it's just incredible, um, you know what what all of the um, the NHS staff are doing. It really is. And, and like she was saying on, on the, she just sent a WhatsApp, um, she was saying, you know, about the selflessness and everything. And it is because, you know, the, the, it, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, such a, such a scary time. And yet there are people out there who are, are carrying on doing, doing what they're doing to help save, save lives. And it's just incredible. So a lot of respect. I have a ram on my list to do. Ooh, I'm, um, I've drawn a sheet before, um, but um, um, it's the it's the horns I'm looking forward to doing, Sarah. Whereas yours got some good horns. Um, that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into all of the texture in the horns. It's um, I think it's going to be quite a fun one to do. So just um, just kind of following the texture really on his little face here, and just whacking that colour in, and then I can I can bring the detail in afterwards. And that's what's lovely about this the film is that you can bring the detail in after. You kind of get a semblance of what the hair looks like, uh, you know, especially for a dog like this who's a bit, you know, wild and and woolly. <laughs> These crazy eyebrows. So I don't know whether it's Good Friday today, isn't it? Happy Easter, everybody. I don't know what you've got planned today, if you've got anything nice planned. Um, I've got my my date with Jason Morgan at half past five, <laughs> watching him doing his live stream. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then we're having a takeaway, which again, I'm really looking forward to. It's becoming a bit of a, um, a bit of a habit on a Friday night. What animal do you prefer to draw? I've been sitting here watching you draw for almost two hours. Oh no, is that how long I've been going? Oh, I'm so sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Thank God. I bet you're all going, take us out of lockdown. Bonnie's doing another live stream. Um, what is my favourite animal to draw? Um, horses, definitely horses. Um, I, 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 I had my first pony at the age of three. I grew up with horses. I thought I was a horse until the age of about nine um i i just love horses um i kind of know how they work i know how the bone structure and everything goes so i, I find horses um particularly they're not easy to draw at all but i don't i don't find them a massive challenge um i love i love horses um you know if i if i was told i could only draw one thing for the for the rest of my life it would definitely be horses um, but I'm getting I'm getting into the wildlife side of stuff I have to admit and I've got some oh my goodness I've got some amazing photos that um, I've been given permission to use um, so I'm going to be drawing um, I'm going to be doing in fact any artist who is listening um, you know you should really be thinking about doing the sketch for survival um, you know if you can get a piece out there because it's so important 
you know, to be uh, kind of supporting things like that, raising money and awareness and everything. But also, you know, you can um, you, you can get your work out there and you may even, you know, there's a chance that you could get into one of the um, the big exhibitions. So, you know, have a bit of a search for sketch for survival and and think about doing a piece. Um, so I've got a, f a fabulous photo that I've been given permission to use um, that I'm going to be um, I'm going to be drawing which I'm, I'm quite excited about actually. Um, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial of it as well. So, um, and that's a big cat that I'm going to be doing there. So I'm, I am quite excited about that. So I do quite like, um, I'm getting into the, the sort of the wildlifey stuff, um, you know, but horses definitely are my firm favorite. So I keep saying I'm going to stop and then I just keep blooming going. <laughs> but this is i mean i draw all day every way every day so you know sitting for two hours and chatting is um it's kind of it's sort of like a little bit of second nature to me really it's when the dogs start to get restless that i know that i've been drawing for too long but they're okay they've had their they've had a, a, a relatively long walk and right so i'm going to use that mars stadler mars razor again in here just to sort of blend a little bit like i said before this is an eraser but i don't use it as an eraser I use it to blend. This blending on drafting film doesn't really work very well. Slipper, you're breathing very loudly. Um, so finding something that kind of helps. Slipper, stop breathing loudly. So finding something that um, you know that helps to blend is um, a bit of a revelation, really, for someone who uses um, drafting film. I'm going to darken his eye up a little bit as well. Oops going to darken this eye just up a touch um, so I'm just using the um, burnt sienna in here just to darken this up a bit okay that's a bit better uh, ba -dum -ba -bum. right put a bit, bit more dark in here it's a bit more sort of weird hair going on in there and I can use the slice tool on that a little bit and just darken that up so I don't know what everybody else is doing today anything interesting I've got to get the um, the ram set up on my um, projector which always takes a little bit of um, jiggery pokery really I'm going to get it on the USB and then onto the pro onto the um, projector and then project it and then get it all so it's um, the right perspective and it uh, I mean it takes me about two minutes to do an outline but about an hour to, s to set up the projector it's uh, a bit crazy really Right, so then we've got his little ear that is in here. I could have just carried on last night, couldn't I? I just could have, should have carried on all night just and just finished drawing him. Um, and then we've got, um, yeah. Just need to get the kind of the structure of the ear in there um, and then we've got some darker areas in here as well I don't do too much more uh, what projector do I use I have very lucky to have the um, Artograph um, Inspire 1000 um, and they don't make them anymore apparently um, it's a really good one. It's got something called, I can't even remember what it's called, um, but you can change the perspective so you don't have to have it perfectly flat. Um, you know, you can kind of change the, change the perspective on it. It's, it's a really good projector. I think they still make the flare. It was, it was expensive um, and I bought mine secondhand from um, a lovely lady in Canada. Um, but it's... Um, it's good it is really good um it um you don't have to turn the lights off to be able to project which is which is amazing you know but when i've had a projector before i've had to turn all of the lights off shut the curtains 
<laughs> you know, it's been a bit. People outside are going, hmm, what's Bonnie doing? Um, you know, so it's uh, this one you can use in broad daylight. Uh, and it's the uh, the resolution is incredible. Um, so it, it was well worth the money. Um, but sadly, you can't um, for some reason, they don't make them anymore. I don't know why. But um, but they do make the flare, the autograph, the aut autograph flare, I think, which is um, it's like it's its baby brother, um, but still really good. So, um, you know, if you can afford one, it's definitely worth uh, trying to find one. Although trying to find anything at the moment um, anywhere is just a complete nightmare. Um, I bought a new tripod for my camera and I've got I've got half of it. But the, the actual bit that I need, the clamp, is not coming till May. <laughs> now, everything's run out of everything. It's um, it's bonkers. So I don't know whether they've just kind of put, well, I suppose they just put them on hold, haven't they? They haven't got people there to, uh, you know, to work and, and everything. So, um, you know, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because we expect when you buy something from Amazon, you know, you go, right, OK, you've got Prime, off we go. Yeah, it'll arrive tomorrow. And then you see that it's not arriving till next week. And you're like, what? I want it tomorrow. And it just kind of brings into perspective that we've become very, very... Um, very demanding <laughs> in uh, you know when we buy stuff we expect it to to arrive the next day i mean i you know i'm used to kind of ordering something just before midnight and it arriving literally the next day um so um you know it's uh, it kind of really puts things into perspective how demanding we've become um you know but uh, So I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm just starting to um, put in these little bits of hair. Um, these little wispy bits, there's some that are sort of like a particular shape. And because I've gone in and I have put all of the pigment in first, I can now start to bring in these nice little bits of hair. And if I'd drawn these from scratch and was just sort of trying to draw around them, I don't think they'd I don't think they'd look well particularly if I did it I don't think they'd look very good um so I'm much better to kind of bring these little highlighty bits in after I've put the pigment in and I would do exactly the same thing if I was using pastel mat um you know I'd use a, a putty eraser just to bring in these nice little bits of of hair in here um this is a just a technique that I've sort of um kind of worked out myself i mean you, no technique is unique so you know when you come up with an idea and you go oh, i've got this amazing idea you can bet your absolute life that three million other artists oops three million other artists will have come up with exactly the same idea <laughs> you know so there's nothing unique really i don't think in this world um especially with techniques for art and stuff but um this is a technique that i've just kind of you know it's it's evolved as i've as i've sort of developed as an artist it's not a technique that i've learned from anybody it's just one that i've you know it's just sort of happened and i've gone oh i wonder if what would happen if but i know that other artists use you know a very very similar technique um you know it's what well, subtraction isn't it but i really do like to draw with my eraser it's just um I just really like it. It takes a little bit of getting your head round that you're adding to something rather than taking it away. So I'm adding in texture here rather than taking anything away. Um, so and then what we need to do here is we need to get a little bit of a little bit of depth and we need to get it so that we know that this is deeper. more in there do a bit of singing while I work I won't sing I promise that's not put everybody off well, we were singing we were doing the um, the great British sing along inquiry whatever it was um, but then I missed a couple of the sessions right so now we need to get a little bit of this weird 
hair that's coming in here so this is always a bit a bit scary you know when you come you've been drawn eye and then all of a sudden you go right i'm going to just rub half of the eye out <laughs> it's like what um you just got to be a bit brave haven't you It does work well on paper. It does work well on paper, um, Antonia. Yeah, uh, I know some people use it on the, um, uh, like the Fabriano, um, Bristol, that type of stuff. Um, whether it works quite as well as the um, film, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, the film, it works really, really nicely on the film, um, but it definitely does work on um, smoother paper. So I can use it. I've used um, I use the Hannah Muller uh, Nostalgia and it works really nicely on there, as does the, um, you know, the crafty knife type things as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth um, having a play around with it. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit more pigment into here and then I'm going to use my slice tool just to add a little bit more um, texture in there as well. I'm going to, oops, a handful of pe pencils, which isn't a good thing to do. So if you have, if you end up with a handful of pencils, it's really not, not good for you. <laughs> like I've just done, do as I, uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Um, it's, um, what I tend to do is I end up with a, a shed load of pencils in my hand. And, um, oh, there goes the microphone again. And, uh, I end up um, with a really sore arm, um, almost like tennis elbow type thing, because you're, you've got your your fist kind of clamped around your pencils for, you know, it can be sort of like a few hours. Um, and um, I get really, really sore arm. So I've got to be quite careful about that. Um, but I still do it. You just forget it becomes like a habit, doesn't it? So I'm just going to, oops. The slice is fun. I mean, the, the first sort of few times you use it, it's a bit, oh, not sure I can do this. This is really scary. Um, and then when you get into it, it's like, yeah, let's get a bit more in there, a bit more slicing in there. You know, you can get some really, really nice details, especially when you're drawing a, you know, a wiry dog like this. It's, um, it's fab. I'm going to get the, a bit of the bit more grey in here and just fill that bit in. It's dark grey in here and just get a little bit of detail into there. You just need a bit of a shadow really and then you then you've got a little bit of hair going over his eye and it's all it's all brilliant. I'm I'm very much in the camp of um, less is more, you know. I'm I'm not looking to um, you know put detail in that's not doesn't need to be there. Um, I think that comes from um, you know, like I keep saying, sheer laziness and um, and a bit of a, a you know the laissez-faire attitude. You know, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll work. It'll be all right. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I, um, that's my whole, that's my ethos really, you know, be right. And you can see here where I've taken the slicey bits out, um, you can actually get some really, really nice detail going into there, you know, where you've kind of added those sort of uh, slice lines, you can then work over the top of them, um, and get some lovely, lovely hair detail, which is, um, you know, it's brilliant. So, and then if you if you put a slice line in and you were like, oh, you know, wish I hadn't have done that with the with the film, you just flip it over and go in over the back and just colour it back in on the back. This is really good. Um, just got in. Hello, need to ask are you working on film? I am. I am working on film. This is the the Polydraw um, point seven five. So I had some left over from my workshop when I was um, the last workshop I did, which was down in Somerset. Um, so I've got some left over. So I thought I'd, I'd use that because it was all cut up and ready. Um, 
so um, I thought I'd have a I'd have a go on it, and and it's okay actually, it's working okay. Um, you know, it's um it's all right. I I do prefer the 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 graphics, but um you know this this one it's it's okay. So he's got some little fuzzy bits on his head n n because I know Vinny because obviously he's my boy. I kind of know how his hair is is just sort of I don't know. It's got a bit of a bed head, really. It's a bit fuzzy. <laughs> so, um... Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'll just use the... I'll just do a couple more minutes and then um, I'm going to let you all get on with your lives. And then um, uh, hopefully I might do a little bit more on him tomorrow. Um, I hope I'm not boring you with all of the live streaming. I, d I mean, I'm I'm quite happy to live stream just sitting on my own doing it. <laughs> but um, I do like to um, I do like to feel I'm drawing with other people or I've got company. It's um, it's just something you know quite nice to do really. I'm just going to bring a few sort of like little wispy bits in here because he's he's got sort of like pale hair, but then he's got some bits that are sort of a bit darker. When you mount this finished piece, do you fix the film onto the paper first? Yeah, so I'd, I would fix it either using the, you know, the little photo corners that you can get. So you've got the little um, triangle photo corners at the edges. Or what we tend to do is just put one bit of film at the top, depending on the size of the piece. Something like this, you just need maybe about two inches of tape and you just literally tape it in the middle at the top and let it hang. Um, and we found that that's, that's the best way um you know to be able to um um to mount and and film the drafting film just because it um it can it can ripple so if you stick it all down it can really ripple um you know underneath the frame and you don't want that you know you don't want to have to keep taking it out and and re reframing it so Bonnie, do you ever draw, um, oh, thank you, Irene. Do you ever draw human portraits? I have drawn some human portraits. I did a, um, I did an Anne Kohlberg um, workshop in the UK in 2017. Um, brilliant, brilliant workshop. And, um, it's, you know, she's got some incredible skills. Um, and um, I did a friend's three children um which uh, you know worked really well i did it on stonehenge paper which is what Anne recommended at the time um and they they worked really well and it was it was um you know it was quite good and i was thinking oh well, I'll, I'll you know i'll start to um offer human portraits as well but i i i guess because i got so busy with doing my animal ones and you know doing tutorials and patreon and all of that type of stuff um I kind of don't have the want really to 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 do humans it's I've done a few humans in um, you know in a portrait that I'm doing of somebody's animal um but the um you know wanting to do humans I think is I think you've got to be very skilled um you know because you have to get the true likeness don't you you really do have to get the true likeness because um you know if you don't it can be not good <laughs> so the people who do the you know the, the human portraits they have so much respect for them um and i don't think it's a route that i'll be going down particularly um i mean i can draw a human but it, but it's not um it's not something i'm really passionate about so um i'll leave the experts to do that i, I much prefer my uh my furry friends and it's not that i don't like people's i you know I, I love people i love being around people it's something that um you know i, I really do like to do but it's just not it's, i'm just not passionate about drawing them really I used to get Anne's magazine but kept forgetting to read them <laughs> yeah i get um i get the downloadable ones the digital ones um margo there um they are really good i do I've, I've got a huge amount of respect for Anne. she's a very 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 talented artist and, a, and a, an incredibly astute businesswoman 
Um, love to follow your drawing. It makes me speed up my own process. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Don't don't overthink. Nobody like nobody wants to overthink. Overthinking is um, overrated. <laughs> so it's quite good to just disappear in things, isn't it? Oh, thanks, Mark. Oh, the the problem is I wear my heart on my sleeve, so I can't. I just can't shut up. And you know, people are like, oh, don't tell everybody your secrets. And I was like, I haven't got any secrets. You can have everything. <laughs> um, because the thing is, you know, actually, even if even if somebody wanted to draw exactly the same as me, they're not going to get exactly the same result because you're a completely different person to me. You have different emotions. You have, you know, different different ways of holding a pencil. Everything's going to be slightly different. So, and you've, you know, that's why I don't, I I share everything. You know, anybody can have every, anything that I've got. Um, you know, if people are looking to sort of, um, you know, if they want to help with their social media and stuff like that, I just say, you know, if, just whatever I do on my social media, just take, just, just, I mean, obviously don't take my, my drawings, <laughs> but you know, the, the, the sort of the, um, the different things I do, the content, all of that, um, you know, just borrow it, just use it. I'm quite happy for people to do that. Um, you know, I think, I think there's so much, there's so much room for everybody. Um, you know, we can all, we can all get along just fine, really. Um, and even even with the teaching, you know, people come to my workshops, kind of suss out what I'm doing. I'm so happy to help people put together workshops or, you know, um, invite them over to my Patreon or, you know, anything like that to sort of help people understand how things work or how I've done it. Or not that I what I do is the way to do it because it's not. But um, it's quite good to sometimes, you know, if you go into something and you have no idea what to do. It can be quite daunting. So, you know, to have somebody who kind of says, oh, well, I did this and I did that. It's it's quite nice, really. Um, I draw fast, too. The fact that pencil is a slow medium. <laughs> yeah, to move faster. Yeah, I, I guess it's, you know, some some people it's it depends on your mindset, doesn't it? And it depends on your personality. And I do understand why, um, you know, some people don't don't like to sort of share all of their t tips and tricks and all of that type of stuff. Um, you know, I, I do I do get that. I do understand why people don't, you know, um, I, I, you know, it it takes all sorts, doesn't it, to make the world go around. And I think, you know, if somebody doesn't want to share their techniques and whatever then we just have to respect that that's that's their decision and that's okay you know i mean there's there are plenty of artists who do share um you know and it's um it's it doesn't matter does it really at the end of the day um you know it's it's not something that people have to do it's something that people want to do and if you don't want to that's that's okay but um yeah I just like to go I'm like Bleh. you can have everything of mine, <laughs> and sometimes it's to my detriment. You know, I'll share stuff and then you know wish I hadn't. But um, you know that tends to be sort of like ideas and stuff like that that maybe somebody. Uh, but you know, it all works out in the end. So just bring a little bit more of this in here. I tend to find when I'm chatting away, um, I get more done as well. And I don't I don't get hung up on stuff either I'm, because I'm I am concentrating, but I'm just sort of um, it's almost like a a subconscious thing that I'm doing here. You know, I'm looking at my drawing, I'm putting all of these bits in, but I'm not it, it's not like I'm um, I'm forcing things to happen. It's not like I'm really concentrating on my drawing. It, it's it's almost like a subconscious it's, I guess it's a bit like driving a car, um, you know, and, and actually I can I can come up with some, you know, quite nice results through not having to really think about things, which is um, which is quite nice, really. Right. I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this slicey slicey in here and then I need to properly darken that up. Sometimes it's a bit tricky, um, you know, if you're really concentrating on something and you're trying to talk at the same time, it can be a little, a little bit hairy, um, you know. But when you're drawing, when you're doing tutorials, you've got, you know, those really complicated bits, you've got to talk through them. 
Um, I mean, I do all of my commentary on my tutorials live. So as I'm talking, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm explaining exactly what I'm doing. And that, that you know, that's a, an art in itself to be able to do that. You, you know, it's, it takes quite a bit of practice to be able to do that because, you know, sometimes when you're really concentrating on something, it, it's it's easier just to be quiet. Um, but having to talk through what you're doing can be a bit a bit scary. Marketing ideas. Oh, I share all my marketing ideas as well. <laughs> you can have everything. Um, but do you know what I really love is if I've if I've been helping somebody with their marketing, so it may say somebody's you know asked me if I'd help them. And I'm like, yeah, of course I will, blah, blah, blah. Have a look at their social media. I'll come up with some um, some ideas for them to sort of tweak a little bit or change or, you know, anything like that. The best thing for me is when they contact me a week later and say, I've done what you said I needed to do. And I've just got 10 commissions. And I'm like, you know, that is the, the best thing in the world for me is where you've kind of given somebody a little bit of advice. You've not told them exactly what to do, but you said, just tweet this, just tweet that. And, you know, they've put all of the work in. You've given them a little bit of a, you know, a, um, you've directed them to maybe look at something, but they've made all of the decisions. They've done all of the hard work. Um, and then they're starting to see their commissions coming through, you know, starting to get loads more work. And that that for me is the, the just the biggest buzz. I love seeing people um, do well. I, I just love it. You know, it it, um, it just makes me smile, um, you know, and I don't. Um, I, no, I just love it. I just I just love see, seeing people do well you know uh, and and deserve to do well as well you know it's um it's uh, yeah and being surrounded by like-minded people and people who are you know happy to share their thoughts and help other people as well so if i've helped somebody and then i dropped my black on the floor by the way and I can't, the slipper's lying on it i can't be bothered to pick it up so i'm going to use the dark sepia instead um but if I've helped somebody and then they then use their knowledge, you know, to then pass on to somebody else, that's amazing. You know, so we're all passing on this stuff. It's um, it's just brilliant, um, you know, and the stuff that I'll tell people, they will then pass it on, but in a slightly different way with their spin on it. So you've got all of these different techniques and everything that are going on. It's just great. So I've made a real hash of this bit here. What I've done is I brought all of this dark up here and it isn't dark at all. So I'm going to take it all out again. <laughs> so this is where art goes wrong. So it's because I'm because I was saying, you know, I'm there. It's all it's turned around and bitten me on the bum, hasn't it? I'm saying, oh, you know, you don't need to I'm just chat away. I don't need to concentrate. Actually, I really do need to concentrate. But you can see how easy it is to pull it back again. It's um, it's fine. And how easy it is just to get completely carried away um, and put all of the wrong things in. <laughs> I did that on purpose, by the way. I've done. I've gone all wrong, so I can show you how to bring it back again. So that's a bit better, and you can see how quickly that's um, that's brought back. Um, just that little bit of light in there. Just bring a bit in there as well. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Stop it, Bonnie. I had to leave my car behind too. Oh no, that was so sad. Um, uh that's working on the right side of the of your brain what's working on oh being drawing and and talking at the same time well clearly my right side of my brain wasn't working when i was working on that bit there realism is easier to describe oh god it is definitely easier to describe i could not i could i don't think i could describe doing something well i guess the impressionism side of stuff and things that are more looser are harder aren't they because a lot of that comes from um you know, how can you, I find it very difficult to ext explain f how something feels. You know, how do you explain how something feels um, rather than, you know, put this down on the paper in this way with this colour, um, this size, blah, blah, blah. But when you start talking about feeling, um, you know, all of that type of stuff, it that's hard. That's hard work, you know. So these watercolour artists who teach, uh, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Um, I mean, watercolour is, I think it's one of the hardest mediums to um, 
to get to grips with anyway, isn't it? It's, um, you know. Okay, so that's, that's, that's not so bad now. I've kind of brought that back a little bit. This eye, I don't really like this eye, I have to say. It's not, it's not, it's not the best eye I've drawn. I just need to do a little bit of a bit of jiggery pokery in there. I need to just bring a little bit of light into the bottom here. Not so many blooming layers of pencil on there. That's a bit better. Oh god, I thought that was another pencil on the floor then. Right, so a little bit more dark in here and then what's the difference between using the eraser and the knife? Well, uh, for me, it's about the softness. So if I use the knife, the knife is going to give me a, a harder feel. Um, not not always, but generally. Um, so if I'm wanting sort of soft hair feeling, then I probably use the eraser. Plus the eraser, if you put a mark in there, it, it, it is generally easier to um, draw over the top of. Um, but I will use the knife to, um, you know, quite a bit to get some nice texture and everything in there. But um, it's just a it's just a feeling more than anything. Um, sometimes when you put the eraser down, it doesn't really work that that well, depending on how many layers of pencil you've got in there. Um, you know, but um, it's just a combination of both, really. Um, a bit more. So I've, I've got a, I've got a real habit of, you know, I've put all of this in here again and then I have a really bad habit of going back over the entire area and, and making it dark again and then realising that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> Very silly. Right, so we may have to just, in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to flip it over one last time. Um, just going to flip it over. Oops, one last time. Um, we've got some black in the back on that paper there, and I'm just going to darken up in here. So you can see that. I'm just going to darken up this area here because I can't get any more dark onto where I put it on the front. So I'm just going to darken him up this little bit here and round there. Um, and I'm going to darken this bit up here. And just put a few more little darky bits in here. I'm using the um, Derwent Drawing Ivory Black for this. And then I'm just going to darken up around his eye there as well. Are you getting a bit restless, Vincy? Eh? Hey? In there too. Right, and then I'm going to flip it back again there we go so that's that's different again um, this is much better now I've got dark in there um, you know so that's that's showing you how brilliant the film is in getting oh, Vincent <laughs> uh, showing you how brilliant the film is in getting those really nice dark rich areas you know just flipping it over um, and putting those darks in um, is um, works really well. So um, the what is the highlighting pen you're using then? So I'm using this one here. This is the Tombow Mono. This is the two point three millimeter Tombow Mono eraser. It's just an eraser. Um, it's got all of the pencil dust on the end of it, so it's looking a bit grubby. Um, and it just comes in looks like a long thin eraser um, and you just kind of push it at the end like you would with a mechanical pencil and it just you know you can use it to kind of bring in some really nice texture and everything in there it's um it's a really really good tool really good tool um brilliant on the um on the film so right so I think I will, um, I'll leave you there. I hope, 
hope it's been enjoyable for you. Um, I am going to start the RAM um, this afternoon, I think. And um, that's going to be a tutorial over on Patreon for uh, May. Um, but I'm going to do, I'll carry on doing a little bit more Vinny um as well and when i when i do him i'll i'll do him as a as a live stream for you and then we'll actually there's not a huge amount left to do um you know we'll do his ear um and then i'll bring in the rest of his body and um please draw his other ear <laughs> yeah i will do i will do but what i'll do is i'll maybe do some more i'll do another live stream tomorrow how's about how's about same time tomorrow um for another 30 billion hours <laughs> um so if i i won't do any more on him today um we'll we'll work on his other ear tomorrow sort of similar ish time but half nine ish um and then um probably get his ear done round into here round onto his nose and then i'll maybe finish off the rest of him on a on sunday something like that um if you're all happy to join me i'm i'm um, really happy to to uh, to go live again so um Lovely to listen whilst doing boring jobs. Bless you, Vicky. <laughs> I leave all of my boring jobs to the children to do. <laughs> I just say, I'm trying to earn a living. I need to be drawing. You need to do the dishwasher. <laughs> anyway, so um, have a lovely day, everybody. Um, stay safe. Hopefully some of you can um, can join me when I, when I go and join Jason's live stream this afternoon. Half past five. I put the link on my page. I'm very excited about it. Um, just to listen to his lovely voice to be honest um and um i will see you all very soon